Hello, people of the internet. Welcome to episode 32 of Paint to Life. This past Saturday, I was at Phoenix Rising, a friendly local gaming store in my local community of St. Catharines, Ontario. I was invited for an in-store painting demonstration. It was nice meeting some of you in the flesh. The model we were painting was called Rot Patch. It was a metal miniature from the Reaper Dark Heaven set. This was the first time I've ever painted a metal miniature, and it's going to be the focus of tonight's episode. So while I paint this to life in true D&D fashion, I'm going to tell you the urban legend about how one family's dream to own a successful farm turned into a horror story that haunts the community to this very day. I'm GMA Tank. Let's get painting. If you missed last week's episode of King Kilgore, the Guardian of the Mysterium, you can catch it up here and check out his labyrinth and all of its glory. Now, stay a while and listen. The year was 1947. World War II had just ended and many soldiers returned home to their families changed men due to the atrocities they witnessed overseas. One such man was named Leroy. He took his young family and moved them into his wife's family farmhouse that she grew up in with the dream of becoming a farmer. Now they had a couple of bad years right off the hop. Their crop output was low and what they were producing was barely classifiable as animal grade produce. You see, not long after they moved in, a large abattoir opened up on a neighboring plot of farmland. An abattoir is a place where animals are butchered en masse. The wastewater from such a place as you can imagine is full of suspended solids, things like fats, greases, fecal matter, and all kinds of disgusting materials. Additionally, it stinks to high hell, making everyone and everything around the place pretty awful. Leroy is walking the fields with his son Vernon, who's 10, his wife Sybil, who is pregnant with their second child, and Sybil's cat Midnight, who follows her around wherever she goes. Sybil begs her husband to offer to sell the failing farm to the abattoir since she's heard they have expansion plans in mind. We could just walk away from this horrible place. Let's move back to the city. He steadfastly refuses, as this is important to him. Failure is not an option. Later that same day, a neighboring farmer named Clyde stops in to brag about how well his seedlings are taking off, to how excited he's going to be for the produce this year, and not to mention to gloat about his outstanding harvest last year. Again, on Leroy's farm, like before, nothing is growing properly, and that which is coming up looks sickly and malnourished. Now as the months pass, Sybil gets very sick, likely because of their tainted drinking water. As a result of the sickness, she has a miscarriage and loses the baby, falls into a deep depression. <laughs> now Leroy is walking, surveying the pitiful fields with his wife Sybil and her pet cat Midnight. She again pleads with him that she can't live here anymore, it's too painful, everything here reminds her of death. And she asks him once again, please, please sell the farm and move with her and Vernon back to the city. Leroy, please. If you love me, you'll do this for me. The warm sun is setting on his face, and his thoughts drift to the atrocities of war. Back to reality, he steadfastly refuses. Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. Leroy, you are a selfish man. I hope one day you'll recognize what that means. I'm leaving, and I'm taking Vernon with me. Leroy enrages and strikes her in the face with his open palm. She falls to the ground but hits her head on a large, half-buried fieldstone and cracks her skull open. As she gurgles and gasps for help, her cat meows a soft meow and licks her forehead, but Leroy, he turns his back on her and walks away. The next morning, he wakes up alone in his bed. The immense realization of what has happened rushes over him, and he feels desperate and ashamed. He races outside to see a terrible sight. Midnight is lying beside his wife's decomposing corpse, which is completely covered in lush, flowering, verdant green vines, spreading out to an area of about half an acre. His anguish immediately dissipates as he marvels at this sight in front of him. For weeks, he can't contain himself as the greenery continues to thicken, flowers drop off, and small pumpkins begin fruiting on the vines. Dad? Where is mom? Your mother left because she didn't love us anymore. Vernon, this is our farm now. Weeks later, he's inspecting his unbelievable green patch, but the leaves are looking quite wilted and yellowing. 
Leroy and Vernon pull out any type of noxious weeds, and they pull water from a lake two miles away with their cart to ensure that it's not tainted, but nothing seems to help. The field is dying. One afternoon while midnight the cat rolls in the field nearby, Leroy is holding one of the yellowing leaves in his hands in contemplation when suddenly a voice behind him startles him. Hello sir, my name is Calvin, the manager of the abattoir nearby. I am looking for Sybil. She's visiting her sister. Now let me ask you, what could you possibly want with my wife? Well sir, we had been discussing the potential sale of your... her farm. So it was you who put those poisoned ideas into my wife's head. First you poison my land with your filth, and then you poison my wife with your false promises. Now you will reap what you've sown. Leroy then slashes at Calvin with his field scythe. Calvin screams, and as he dies, his spilt blood is quickly absorbed into the dry ground. Dad, what have you done? His ten-year-old son Vernon had been behind him and witnessed his father's aggression. It's okay, son. It's all going to be okay now. That man was bad. He and Mommy tried to hurt us, but they're both gone now. The field has spread across his entire farm, and the pumpkins that are growing are large and prosperous. His neighbor Clyde comes wandering to the field. Well, I have to hand it to you, Leroy. You sure turn this place around. What's your secret? The secret is the soil. Well, you're giving me a run for sure, but my produce is sure to win county this year. Face it, I'm still a better farmer than you could ever be. Leroy feigns a smile in front of gritting teeth. As Clyde is leaving, he clumsily trips on a large, half-buried field stone jutting out of the ground. Midnight the cat hisses. When he lands under the carpet of vines, he finds himself face to face with a half-buried human skull. He gets up with a fright and turns to run. What's the matter? Did my wife scare you? Come to think of it, maybe that's what she needs. Another round of fertilizer! Leroy slashes at his neighbor's back, causing him to fall to the ground where the vines overtake him. Witnessing this from inside their house through a window, Vernon looks on in horror at the twisted smile on his father's face and ducks down quickly to stay out of sight. It's harvest time, and the county fair is today with its prestigious prizes and awards. Leroy and Vernon have raised one of the world's finest looking pumpkins and have lifted it up on top of their mule pulled wooden cart, but neither is able to cut the pumpkin from the vine. No axe, no saw, no knife, no scythe can cut it free. Leroy keeps growing more and more frustrated as time until the fair draws near. Finally, he loses his cool and begins to shout. What do you want? What else do you want from me that I haven't yet given? The ground trembles. Pumpkins and vines collapse on top of themselves and from which arises a shambling mound of vegetation. Vernon trembles at the sight, but his father stands his ground. So there you are. What do you want from us? The living plant extends a viney appendage and appears to point at the boy Vernon. What do you want with my boy? He never done wrong by you. The plant then again raises its makeshift arm and appears to point at the scythe nearby. You, you want me to feed you the blood of my only son? Leroy trails off as if seriously contemplating the request. The creature's leaves rustle as its main pumpkin wobbles left and right, back and forth, as if emulating no. Leroy then cries out in anguish as Vernon has swung the scythe across the back of his father's neck, causing the man to collapse and yelp. Vines race from the creature, plunging into his eyes, ears, nose, mouth, muffling his cries of terror. The mound then raised a gentle vine and rubbed a soft leaf on the young boy's cheek before collapsing back onto the ground. Just then, the prized pumpkin detached from the vine, and the boy then led the mule and the wooden cart to the fair, where he won the purse, which was $1,000, which in today's money would be about 15000 US. When accepting his prize, he introduced himself as Vernon, the sole owner of... You know what? Despite this happening almost 80 years ago, I don't want to tell you the name of the farm. It's probably the one close to where you live. And I promised the family who owns it, descendants of Vernon, that I would tell their story and paint a life, but I don't want to get them into any trouble due to their family history. So, Sybil, the pumpkin golem.
All right, here's my finished version of Sybil, the pumpkin golem for the shelf. I hope you liked my story tonight. I hope you've got your pumpkin picked out for Halloween. I hope it's not one of Sybil's. Thank you again to Phoenix Rising for hosting myself, Leland from Aegis Brand Studios, and Mike from Epic Duck Studios this past week. Uh, they plan on doing this every so often, so it won't be the last one. And if you can come up to the next one, I'll try and give you a little more notice than negative one days. So now's the time to go down to Phoenix Rising or your friendly local gaming store. Grab a brush, some paints, grab a mini, and start painting along with us here on Paint to Life. If you like my channel, my storytelling, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps us grow. Next week is the final episode of our Halloween-themed season. And uh, if you haven't seen the Nightmare Vesper video, which is linked here, I suggest you check that out because I have a feeling next week's final video, well, she might have a reprised role. That's all I'll say. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I'm GMA Tank. Wash your hands, people. Next week will be the final Halloween episode, and I don't have a problem telling you, that's the Headless Horseman. <laughs>